Hello, my name is Anselm McDonnell, and this is a video about some of the extended techniques that you'll find when you're playing Esau's Hunger. Uh, thank you very much for playing it. I've really enjoyed writing it, and I look forward to coming and seeing you all in Canada. So I'm going to go through the classical guitar effects first, and then the electric guitar effects. So starting off in the first section, the classical guitar orchestra opens the piece playing uh, these bitones which are the square note heads that you'll see. So some of you have harmonics, those should be fairly straightforward. The bitones, the square note head is the note that you fret. So for example, guitar 2A at figure one is playing B on the fourth string. Okay, so you fret the note B on the fourth string and then you pluck behind your finger like that. The little note above the square note head that some of you will have is the sounding pitch. I stopped doing those later on when you have chords because they were just getting too many notes and I didn't have enough space. But just in case you're wondering if there's two notes, you're just playing the square note head. So then moving on to section A where you have these chords with bitones. It's the same idea. You find the fretted notes that are the square note heads. And then you play a tremolo behind the chord you're holding. Now you can either do this with your first finger, but I find that quite tiring after a while, so I've been using a plectrum like this. I'm using my elbow to kind of mute. The open strings so that they don't ring. Um, this might have to change, for example, uh, guitar 1B at bar 10. You have to strum a chord normally with the flesh of your thumb and then go to playing the bitones behind it. So you'll need to leave your elbow off so that the open chord can ring. While we're on this section, section A, just one thing to note, that some of the harmonics that guitar 1C and 2C are playing are at frets 3 and 4. Now to play these, you can't actually play them directly on fret 3 and 4 like you would if you were playing a harmonic at the 5th fret or the 12th fret. You need to actually move them slightly. So if you're playing the harmonic at the 3rd fret, you need to be slightly above the third fret. So they're much clearer there. If I play them directly on the third fret, they don't have quite the same sound. So slightly above and you'll get a clearer tone. And then same with the ones on the fourth fret, except you go down slightly. So it's just before the fourth fret. So to play a G sharp harmonic on the E string, just slightly before the fourth fret. Okay, so the next technique is at figure F, and this is called tamburo, which is a snare drum kind of sound. So you take two strings, the two strings that are indicated, and twist them one over the other. Uh, just be careful to make no noise while you do this. Hold the strings down by your left hand while you find it with your right hand. So for example, guitar 2C, you're playing strings 5 and 6, and you have to fret them at the 5th fret. So, firstly, I take the two strings and twist them over each other like that. And then, well, actually, I need to do this one with my left hand as well. My left hand is holding them both down at the fifth fret. And then you strum the two strings. Guitar 1B. You're doing the same thing, but you're doing it at the 12th fret with strings 4 and 5. So twist, and then press the two down and play them. And 
and then guitar 1A and 2A, you've got that with the strings 2 and 3 at fret 15. Those ones are much easier to twist around. So next, for the classical guitars at figure H, uh, number 2, you have a tremolo chord marked unmeasured that says rapidly strum with flesh of finger holding finger parallel to string. Okay, so if I find the chord here, rather than a tremolo like that, what you're going to do is strum it sideways with the flesh of your finger. I find it easiest to use my middle or third finger for this. And then at figure I, you're going to do the same thing, but before you finish your chord, you start singing a note in the chord and hold it on beyond the end of the chord. And that will develop over throughout that section. And that's everything for the classical guitar orchestra, so I'll move now to the electric guitar. So the first electric guitar entry is at bar 10 after figure A, and this is electric guitar 3A. Now, as I was just saying with the classical guitars, uh, this tremolo chord here is not strummed in a conventional way, but with the side of the flesh of your finger holding the fingers parallel to the strings like this. Again, I find it easier to use my middle or third finger. The next effect for the electric guitars is at figure D. I, I need distortion on my amplifier to make this have any kind of effect. Um, so experiment with your own amplifier to see what you need to do to get some sound out of this. So for this sound, I'm trying to create a kind of popping uh, texture, you know, like a rumbling sound on the guitar. So I use my left pinky on my left hand to mute the open strings so they don't ring. And then the rest of my fingers just drum up and down randomly. vary the speed and the pressure depending on how the conductor. The next effect then is at figure D number one and for this effect you need to mute the guitar with the left hand and then use the side of the plectrum to play a flutter tremolo on the strings. So I'll show you closer. I'm putting the, the plectrum against the side of the string and then moving it back and forth quite fast. This works better if you've like a rough brand name on the side of your plectrum rather than a smooth one. It can work with a smooth plectrum, but you'll need to press harder. Uh, pay attention to which string is indicated because it creates quite a different effect playing on the lower wound strings as opposed to the higher strings. The final effect then for the electric guitars is the detuning harmonics at the end of the piece. Just to point out again with the harmonics is that if you're playing a harmonic at the third fret, you need to slightly push it up so that it's just above the third fret. And not straight on the third fret, which doesn't last very long. And then the ones on the fourth fret, so for example, F sharp on the fourth string need to be slightly before the fourth fret. I find if I have the bridge pick up on, um, that seems to pick up the sound a lot better. I'm playing down near the bridge. So for this sound, you pluck a string, uh, you pluck the harmonic indicated, and then slowly detune a bit, and keep doing that on the same string, in the same place. It's meant to be quite an um, ambient effect, so don't, don't play it too fast together, just sort of... 
and don't detune too fast either. Great, thank you very much for watching.